sons and their wives and his own wife. And yet God closed the door. You think as the water started rising, people didn't want to get in that ark? But it was too late. Just as it would be too late one day to become a Christian, to believe in Jesus and obey Him, one day it would be too late. There will be a lot of people wishing they had gotten in the ark. This is in the days of Noah. And so God closes the door of the ark and the flood begins. Now Noah was 600 years old when the flood began. He a pretty old fellow, wasn't he? But they lived a long time back then, as we'll see. God sent rain for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained. The waters rose until the highest mountains were under about 30 feet of water. So there was no place for man to escape to because the water completely covered even the highest mountains. And the water stayed there for 150 days, even if somehow somebody could hold on to something that was taller than 30 feet above the mountains. I don't know what that could be, but say that they could. It stayed there for 150 days. And so no flesh, that, that no air-breathing flesh survived the flood. Well, now it's time now to put things back, you might say. The waters began to recede. God causes a wind to pass over the earth and start drying the waters up. Five months after the flood began, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. Now, Mount Ararat would be over in Turkey today. Three months later, the tops of the mountains could be seen. You could imagine this would take quite a while, wouldn't it, for these waters to start receding. After 40 days, Noah opened the window to the ark. He let a raven out. Now, not 40 days from when it started. 40 days after the waters start receding. After 40 days, he releases a raven. And the raven just uh, flew here and there until the waters were dried up. And Noah sends out a dove. And, but the dove couldn't find a place to land. It comes back to the ark. Seven days later, the dove goes out again, and it comes back with an olive leaf. And then seven days after that, the dove is left, let out of the ark, and it doesn't return. And Noah knows that the, the dove found a place to rest, and it did not need to return to the ark. And so in the second month of Noah's 601st year, the earth was dried, and God says to Noah, you bring your family now out of the ark. And, and back, to our, uh, back to our Bibles, in chapter 7, the flood happens, and all of man is destroyed. In verse 23, so he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both men and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. That's pretty plain, isn't it? People will speculate that it was a limited flood in that region of the world, but the Bible says only Noah and his family survived. And so chapter 8, it says God remembered Noah, and he starts putting things in place to dry the waters up. And then it says in verse 15, God spoke to Noah saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring all the animals out. And so that's what they do. Noah, being a righteous man, being a man who feared God and being saved by a great deliverance, he builds an altar. One of the first things he does when he gets on dry ground, he builds an altar. And Noah took one of every clean animal and offered it to God. That's why there were seven pairs of every clean animal animal. And God was pleased. And God said to himself, he would never again destroy all living things as he had done in the flood. In fact, he says in Genesis 8 verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Aren't you glad to know that? There's a lot of talk sometimes about the seasons mingling and, and you can't hardly tell one from an, another. And, and there are parts of the world that the climates do not change as much. But as a rule of nature, God said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. God put those in place. But now, do you remember how God chose to, to call to man's mind this great promise 
that he would never again destroy the earth with a flood. You remember, every time you've ever been driving and it's cloudy and it might be kind of rainy in one place and not in another and the sun is shining through some of the clouds and there's a rainbow. They're beautiful, aren't they? That's a sign of God's covenant with man. To this day, God said, I will never again destroy the earth with a flood. And the rainbow is God's way of reminding man of that wonderful promise that he made. And so now, now Noah and his family, they've, they've offered these sacrifices in, in uh, chapter 9. It says, so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth and on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth and on the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. Now all these folks who get so big into animal rights, and we ought not to, to mistreat animals, but yet we need to remember God put man over the earth. He said they are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. Originally, God had given vegetables for man to eat. He says, everything is food for you, but you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, the blood. That's one of those universal commands that God has always had. Whether it be in this time, in the very early stages of man, whether it be in the Old Covenant, the Law of Moses, or whether it be the New Covenant, the Law of Christ. It's always been that man shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. And so, he, he, um, in, in the giving now of these instructions, there are some things that God says that, that are new. One is those animals being for food. Man having dominion over the animals. But he also gives a penalty for murder. You notice in verse 6 of Genesis 9, whoever shed